for waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I gotta say, I'm so excited for this video today because it is one step closer to getting fish and coral and water in this tank. So before we can do all that, we need to go ahead and add the sand and the rock work. So I mentioned in one of the previous videos, the sand that I'm getting, why I got what I got. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the sand in the tank and then I'm going to um, build the rockscape, well, plan the rockscape and then kind of transfer it over to the tank. So let's go ahead and get the sand in the tank. Okay, the sand that I'm putting in this tank is the Carib Sea Reef Sand. I've got five bags of it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump it in. But you might see me as I go along, there are little packets in these bags. You need to take them out. Um, it's going to help to clarify the water once I get water in the tank. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove those as I add. One thing I would recommend if you're doing this at home and using the same type of sand, grab yourself a towel so that you have it ahead of time because it is a little bit messy. Now, I only pulled out two of those clarifier packets. There's still three more in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and level this out and find those packets. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my hands off and then it's gonna be time to get started on rock work. All right, in the previous video, when I talked a little bit about ordering the rock and the sand, I didn't tell you what rock I was going with, but I decided to go with Marco Rock. I love the look of the Marco Rock and not that I have anything against any of the other brands of rock that are out on the market, but I've used a bunch of them in my previous tanks. And since this is a brand new tank for me, I wanted to do something totally different. Now, as you can see here on the table, I've already taken and unboxed one of the boxes of rocks, but I wanna take you with me as I pull the rest of the rock out of the box. So let's go ahead and get the rest of it unwrapped. All right, let's go ahead and open, you can open this up. You can see that I've already taken a few of the rocks out, but I love how this is packaged. So I thought I would show you. All right, now that I've got it all unboxed, I realized I didn't tell you which type of Marco rock. So all of the stuff, the larger um, boulder looking pieces on this side are the premium reef saver rock. And over here we have the Marco shelf rock. So one of the things that I really like about this as I was unboxing, this is probably my favorite piece that came out. Um, not only is it great, it's got lots of places that you can put little frags, but also you could put a frag in here or this could be a great hiding hole for a blenny. So just, I'm super excited for this rock. I love it. It is everything that I hoped it would be. I'm gonna go ahead and try and uh, lay out what I want the rockscape to look like. That way, when I go to put it in the tank, it flows a lot easier. So I'm gonna spread this out, make some space and get to building. Okay, as you can see, I've got my rockscape kind of set out the way I want it. I haven't, um, secured it into place yet, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the scape itself first. If you were to look at my original design, I had something kind of like a wave shape coming out with like branching fingers and arms off of it. If you've seen uh, Marco Rock's Instagram page, you probably have an idea of those minimalistic designs that I'm talking about. I really like them, but the more I got to thinking about it, the more I realized that that's not gonna be a good environment for the fish that I wanna keep. 
Minimalistic rockscapes don't offer a lot of hiding places for those fish to feel safe and secure, which is kind of how I ended up with this design. Now, I really like that it's got a lot of different places that I can put my coral frags, no matter what type of coral that I've got. If you look, I've got some low flat pieces all the way up to something that may sit about halfway up the tank. And if you think about the different species of corals that you're gonna be keeping, they don't all like the same light requirements and they don't all have the same flow. Now, when it comes to flow, I also have spaces. If you look down at eye level, you can see that it's not just a solid wall of rock. Now, something else that I have that I really like, I mentioned earlier, I loved this piece. So I could use this as a, this little hole right here as a centerpiece for um, a beautiful coral that I might find, or I could leave it maybe end up being the home for a blenny and then I could have coral frags on each of these different arms here. So there's a lot of different options for the fish and coral placement that I have in the tank. Now, the next step is to get all of these rocks, hopefully in this relatively similar configuration into the tank. Now, if you've ever done this before, you know it's not the easiest and it doesn't always work out the same way, but this is my plan of attack for this. I'm kind of going to take it from the bottom and put pieces like this. They'll probably sit near the surface of the sand, but these larger pieces that are the base, I'm going to push them down a little bit into the sand behind me, almost to the glass. And the reason for that is because I want to make sure that there is going to be a little bit of oxygen that is able to get from the top in the water column down to that sand in the substrate. If I were to leave it like this, I might end up creating an anoxic zone and have a lot of uh, detritus and buildup, and that's not really anything I want. And so putting the rocks down there helps to prevent that. But another benefit of doing the rocks like that is it kind of helps to secure the base work without having to glue the bases of the rock into the tank. Now, to secure all of the rocks together, there's a lot of different methods that you can use at home, but the way that I'm gonna go is I'm gonna continue using the Marco Rock um, kit, if you will. So I have got this mortar kit right here, and I've also got the Marco Rock powder. The way this is gonna work, it's gonna be really fast, is that I'm going to mix some water with this mixture, and then once I've got that mixed. I'm gonna pour a little bit of this powder into the bucket along with this liquid mix and stir it up. Now, once it gets to a certain consistency, I'm gonna have a very limited time to work with this and get that onto the rocks and get them in place like I like it before it sets. Now, as I'm doing this, while this mixture is still wet on the rocks, I'm going to add some of this powder. That will ensure that the color of the rock isn't changed. This is made up from the um, crushed bits of rocks, so it's all going to look uniform and the same. So, something I really like. Now, if you've ever used um, the two-part epoxies, which is another way that you can go, you know that sometimes you might not always get the right color match, and depending on how you place it, you might be able to see that. Um, until the corals start to fill in the tank. But whatever way you decide to do it is entirely up to you. There's no wrong way, but since I'm using Marco Rocks, I'm just gonna go with the whole Marco Rock method. Let's go ahead and get this rock work into the tank so we can get water in there. Okay, the rock work is set in place. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is a lot of you have asked me at the shows what real time looks like for the tank. Well, this time, this actually took a little bit longer than I anticipated. The mortar will do a soft cure in two hours, but a hard cure is 24 hours. Now, this middle layer I put in there and it was still a little bit wobbly, so I went ahead and actually gave that overnight to cure a little bit more before adding this top layer of rock in there. And I'm really pleased with how it turned out. Now, you might notice that in the middle there is a rock that is missing from the original scape that I had set in the tank and on the table. 
well, when I got it in here, I'm not really sure that I like the look of that rock. So if I decide to add it later, I can. I'm not super worried about it because there's several different, very secure ways to put that in there without having to use the mortar to attach it to the structure. Now, one thing I wanted to mention is I'm really pleased with how the mortar kit turned out and with the Marco Rock powder to put on there. Um, yes, if you look closely, I'm sure that you can see the seams, but at a glance, you really can't tell that they're there, and I'm very pleased with how it turned out. All right, that is it for this video. Make sure you tune back in for the next video where I'm gonna show you how to make Red Sea salt water. And of course, finally, I'm gonna be putting water in the tank. Now, before I go, I wanted to say thank you so much to Joe at Marco Rock because he was phenomenal at answering all the different questions that I had and giving me different options when it came to scaping the tank. If you have any questions for them, feel free to reach out on social media. They're super, super helpful. Next up, I wanted to say thank you so much to Red Sea for helping to make this dream a reality. And last but not least, saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for providing the rock and the sand that I'm using in this tank. Okay, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.